Hello, welcome to uh, Sonic Lab. Uh, we're twos up today because we've got something a bit different. We're looking at the Steinberg UR22 Mark II interface, which on the face of it, audio interfaces aren't generally the most exciting things to review video-wise, are they, Gaz? <laughs> well, and this one really is, you know, it's a very simple audio interface. It's combi, two in and two out combi with input, MIDI so in and out. XLRs or jacks into and it. And th these use Yamaha. It's a very sturdy box made out of metal. It's probably got the best build quality in its class. Um, Almost a percussion instrument. <laughs> oh yeah, I like nice that. <laughs> Let's have a look at the front panel then. Okay, the, the pro connectivity there. That's over USB, we should probably say. USB 2. I USB think. 2, yeah. So yeah, so we've got our two gain controls. Uh, input 2 has a toggleable high impedance switch, so we can make uh, that essentially a DI plug for putting guitars into. Uh, output control, phones, and this mix balance control. I mean, we've seen these things before, but I think it's worth singling out because, you know, you move it over to the left and more me, move it over to the right. More return. More return. And I mean, it really makes it just so simple to kind of get a headphone mix. Um, I should mention though, if you're monitoring a stereo input, you will hear it in mono, or if you're listening to mono, you'll only ever hear what right. you're monitoring. As a, Unless you as a happen mono. to be going through your yeah. DAW. Yeah, absolutely. But yeah. Obviously, latency will start coming into the signal, right? Of course. So this is a, lo a, a no latency option. Right, OK. Yeah. And headphone output, is it headphone loud? It's, it's OK. I mean, I, I've been using the blue MoFi headphones, which have Super, amplified. Yeah. So with that case, it's fine. But yeah, I mean, it's certainly a nice, clean headphone output. Um, and so anyway, on the back, we've just simply got the two outputs on quarter inch jacks. Uh, a little switch there for phantom power which applies equally to both preamps. And three, five pin mini din. Five pin mini din, You'll yeah. Be happy. I am happy, always good to see. Uh, and then at the back here, we've got a little switch for the, um, at the back here, we've got a little switch here for the power source. So we can either power it, if we're using it with a laptop, we can just power it. Bus power. Bus power, but we can flick it over for this additional uh, USB, uh, micro USB input, which is just purely used as power if you want to use it with an iPad, an iPad for instance. It? Yeah. So it is class compliant. Yes. And it will, so it will work with an iPad. Obviously, it won't power the iPad, which is a big shame. I mean, there are not many things do, no. but it, that would have been nice. I it guess. would have been nice. Uh, what I was doing. Um, when I've been using it was I've been powering it. I've been plugging this power supply into one of these mobile phone battery packs. And uh, so I- oh, So using that with the iPad, right? Using it with the iPad. So it, it made it entirely mobile. Okay, that adds another little thing that you have to take with you. But okay. I mean, I think these D pre's are very good quality pre's. So I guess, you know, they need that extra little bit of juice to right. drive them. So. That's the nuts and bolts and the sort of basic hardware side of it. Mm -hmm. um, to make this review a bit more interesting, Gaz very kindly undertook a mammoth task. <laughs> Explain what you did. Well, I was thinking, I mean, uh, ostensibly, we've seen audio interfaces like this before. With these, um, these, you know, the converters and the preamps being of, you know, really high standard, I thought, well, maybe the thing to do is to really put it through the test. And I tried to make a big multi-track epic using only an iPad and this. And we use Steinberg's Cubasis for it. So which is running on your iPad, which is yeah. uh, what, Jen? This is an iPad Air um, 1. It, the project is mixed. Everything, everything is done inside of Cubasis. And the only thing that wasn't standard was that Cubasis has a little shop in it where you can buy a couple of extra effects. And I bought Effects Pack 1. Right. Other than that, everything is internal to Cubasis. Oh, so at this point in the show, Gaz actually documented uh, this process and uh, we're going to play that now. Enjoy. <laughs> Never get 
getting pale We can't hide forever We can fly out of the darkness You're so good to me You kill our company I'm so happy when you call Ooh, My name is the reach Shooting right through authority Make a long Gaz, progtastic, <laughs> ah. I have to say. So you wrote and composed that and recorded the whole thing into Cubasis, right? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, really what I wanted to do was I wanted to just to really kind of throw such a lot at it. So, you know, especially once the tracks are starting to, the, the track count is going up, you know, the kind of, that's where the quality The separation the and the separation, definition. Exactly. Yeah. So, and, and I think that it came out really well in that respect. You know, I think that the, those deeprees are really cool. And I should mention, I actually recorded this at 16-bit 44K as well. So right, it was, but it will do 192, yeah, 24. If yeah, necessary. of course it will, it will. So um, how many tracks was that? Well, the project in total, if I whiz through it, I've got, well, 42, 43 tracks. But I think probably about 24 tracks playing, playing at, the same time, at, right. at, at, the, at the same time. And just to clarify, all, the mix and all the effects are running from here as well. Yeah, yeah, everything, yeah, absolutely everything. So so in operation, I mean, most of these mm. things you recorded in place, did you? I and mean, that was the sort of idea. Yeah, So yeah. yeah. So I noticed the ba when the bass kicks in, it re you really hear the weight of it. Was that just DI'd straight into? I was going through a VT bass pedal. That's a Tech 21 sort of ampeg. So that's like a pre-amp amp in a box. Analog Can we have a listen to that? Yeah, sure. Um, so we've got a bit of compressor, a bit of compression on there as well, and there's a bit of automation of chorus when it does a little bass solo as well. Right, okay. So, but it's got body, body, yeah. Um, and the other thing I know is when the drums come in. Yeah. Now, presumably, you could only use a couple of mics on that. So, what did you use? So I used a D112 bass drum mic and I used a SE Electronics R1 ribbon. Um, oh, that's, oh, let's have a listen to that because they sound very yeah. right for the track. Yeah, but they're actually quite simple. I mean, this is the overhead, which we've just got the stock EQ and compressor on, bringing in the kick as well. So, you know, in the no, room. In, in operation, yeah. how, how were you finding it? I was finding it really good because, as I say, I was running with the UR22. I had it going into a little battery pack, 
So the thing is, I could just pick it up on the iPad and just plonk it wherever I was. And just put the leads in. Yeah, so like, so for instance, when I was doing the vocals, you know, I could just, everything was just quite easy to do. I could just set little loops up around it. And, um, you know, quite often what I find is when I'm being the performer and the engineer at the same time. That's, that's it, quite difficult. Yeah, and you know, the fact that this just boils that <laughs> process down to just that one knob. Yeah, you know, it yeah, makes yeah, yeah. That makes it a lot easier. Sort of I guess one of the things is obviously that session probably took more than one iPad charge to accomplish. <laughs> yeah. And I guess that's where there's a slight problem in terms of, you know, because once you're on out of charge, you have to charge it up again because you can't power the iPad and the and the UR22 at the same time, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, this was a bit of an epic track. I ended up spending hours on it, so I did actually hit that issue. But I mean, you know, the iPad will last for 10 hours or something on a charge. You just have to plan ahead a little bit and not do two 20-hour sessions I did on this. So when you were mixing down, yeah. presumably you were coming out of the iPad, were you using monitors or were you working on headphones to do the mix? Um, I, yeah, I actually, I just ran it out into my monitors. And right, so uh, you got the benefit of your, yeah. and, and that's when you can really hear whether or not this passed the test. I mean, so how was the sound of the uh, UR22 just coming directly out of the monitors? Uh, it sounded great. I mean, it sounded pro level, you know, it sounded really good. I was very pleased. Um, everything sounded defined, and as you mentioned with the bass, there's a, there is that sense of kind of weightiness to it, which mm. I think, you know, because everything went through those preamps. So really, the, this whole project, for instance, you know, is, you know, it is, it it's is a test of that. Test of the and, and coming back to the ribbons, mm -hmm. was it? How was the gain? Because obviously ribbons yeah, need a lot of gain. Well, I mean, I was recording like drums uh, and a few things I was doing. Yeah, you do have to run it quite hot. You know, yeah. I mean, I was up in the upper limit of it with the ribbons. On the overheads, less so. so yeah, obviously, the drums are so loud. But um, no, but they sounded pretty good. I think um, I thought it sounded really good with my Rode NTK. It's a valve mic. Uh, which exhibits a bit of a uh, slightly sort of rough edge on things. I think right. it must be the, to do with the valve in there. But the combination of these pre's, it sounded really what smooth. What did you use the uh, road uh, on? I used that for the lead vocal. You're so good to me. You kill a company. Oh, you can hear the valve, don't you? I'm so happy when you call. So I've got the, the compressor again on here. I've actually got the little stereo width um, plug in which comes as part of that FX pack right. on the lead vocal on the chorus. It just seems just to give it a little bit more, more presence. It's, got, it's competing against lots of, lots of uh, other elements. So I'm guessing, I mean, obviously you set the challenge on the iPad. I mean, obviously work fine on laptop and you could run at higher sample rates. Yeah. Would you be comfortable doing a similar kind of thing with the laptop and getting, I mean, obviously, obviously you'd have the benefit of the, the more familiar edit situation and, and working on arrangements and, and mix is going to be easier than on the iPad directly, I guess. Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, I would have absolutely no qualms in using this in any professional situation, really, you know, in, in that respect, that, that the quality you get out of it is plenty good enough for most applications I can think of, really. Obviously, the track, the input count is, is, is going to be the, the limiting factor. But in terms of the preamps and the converters, both going in and coming out, yeah, no problem at all. And just to reiterate for a final time that the fact that I was running it off that battery does facilitate uh, for very, you know, very much. That's like a portable battery. For portable battery just for charging your phone up. But it just ran that with a, with the phantom power and stuff, no, no problem. So that that was, um, you know, I thought that was actually quite cool because if you notice in a video I did actually, I popped to my friend's house who had his drum kit set up and, uh, and I popped to some mates who did some backing vocals. And, and you just took the whole thing on that? Yeah, yeah, no, and it was just that easy thing, just like laptop bag, I had my mics and some cables and, you know, it was just, it was just easy. And I thought, oh, yeah, I didn't even have to, you know, I'm not hunting around for plug sockets or anything. So, yeah, that was, that was cool. Excellent. Well, so this has just been announced. Uh, I think it's around about, uh, how do we know what the price is? £129. Pounds, £129. Pounds. Yeah. Uh, other currencies will uh, show below. Mm. Um, overall, though, very pleased with it. I know we've, mm. we've worked quite hard to make this a bit more interesting than your average review. <laughs> I, I must say, the amount of work you've put into well, that. And I would also like to say that Gaz actually made the video as well. So, right. so uh, yeah, kudos to you, mate. Oh, thanks. No, I mean, you know, how do you test something like this without actually testing it, properly testing it, putting it through its paces? And I think, you know, it, it really come up trumps. And, you know, that 
particular project. It was getting quite complicated at times. A lot, you know, quite a lot of tracks going on, and you know, at no point was that a problem at all. Right. Um, Cubasis itself is a terrific piece of software. You know, you start to kind of hit the limit of it when you want to start to get into macro editing and yeah, stuff. You know, and maybe it, you can global do, arrangement move around and stuff. Ah, uh, like yeah. You know, it does get. That's where you start to think, okay, this is, you know, I'm reaching. But you can load this project into Cubase as well, can yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, there's a little thing you download for Cubase, which is a Cubase, just from the Steinberg site, a Cubase importer. Once, you, once you've actually installed that, it's a, it's a one time thing that you have to do. Then that, uh, that allows for just a very simple and bring, uh, projects in. bring your projects in. And then, and they open up, and it, you know, everything's in the right place. And it, in fact, it tries to load in the equivalent plugins as well with equivalent settings uh, although it doesn't sound exactly the same though so but I mean that's pretty cool so right so I can see that as being a, a nice really combination combination a nice way of working yeah and um, yeah you know and as I say um, two working together is yeah it was it was a pleasure Excellent. Well, thank you very much for watching. Uh, that was Gaz Williams and his... What's the track called? It's called Killer Company. Killer Company. Uh, <laughs> that's it for this time. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh, please do check out uh, more of our broadcasts coming shortly. See you next time. You're so good to me. you killer company. I'm so happy when you call. Authority, make our own history and make, make some, some noise.